Hey guys, Richard Holder here. Welcome to the channel. So this is for all the Turbo LS guys, although this works for every turbo combination. Here's the question. Which one makes more power? More boost and lower back pressure or less boost and higher back pressure? Would you believe they both do? In this video, I'm going to show you two different situations. One where we raise the boost, lower the back pressure and make more power. Not real surprising, but what about a situation where we lower the boost, raise the back pressure, and still make more power? How is that even possible? Let's check it out. Our first example comparing boost pressure and back pressure and the relationship between those and power came when I did a test comparing different the effect of different exhaust sizes on turbo applications. So what I did was we ran a single turbo 6 liter application, and I ran it with what would simulate basically a three inch complete exhaust. So it was, it necked the turbo, the outlet of the turbo down to a three inch exhaust. And then I put a couple of bends in it. And then we also had a three inch straight through high flow muffler. This one was from Magnaflow. And then we compared that to basically a four inch open exhaust. And I wanted to illustrate what happens in both like boost pressure, back pressure, and the back pressure like between the turbo and the um, and the muffler to find out if back pressure there had an effect on back pressure elsewhere. That full video is up, so you can take a look at that. We're not discussing the, the, if those effects. You can take a look at that full video, but that one's up. But I wanted to show you what happens and the relationship between boost pressure and back pressure and power on this application because it worked out completely different on another application. So we're going to kind of compare this two. So on this six liter, it was the six liter LY6. It had trick flow 225 heads on it. It had a Dorman LS6 intake manifold. It had a BTR stage three turbo camshaft in it. And we had a single turbo with a two and a half inch Y pipe. We had the uh, Borg Warner uh, a billet wheel S480 T4. It was a 92 millimeter turbine, a 1.25 AR. And we ran this thing, um, and I'll show you what happens with the boost and the back pressure uh, when we get to that in a minute. So this was run with the three inch exhaust, and I'll show you a picture here of what the three inch exhaust looked like. And then we compared that to, we replaced that three inch exhaust with a four inch open exhaust and saw a big change in power. And I will go over part of why there was this big of a change in power from a simple exhaust change. But we went from 850 horsepower or so to over 900 horsepower, 908 or 10. And um, we went, uh, peak torque was up to from 755 all the way up to 807 foot pounds. You can see it. <clears throat> The bigger exhaust allow this thing to gain power everywhere. And this is kind of what we would expect um, from a big exhaust change. But the difference here might not quite be this big from just the exhaust. And now let's take a look at the boost pressure and back pressure curves. And we can figure out why some of this change can be attributed basically just to a change in boost. Now that we've illustrated the change in exhaust size and the effect that it had on the power curve, we picked up quite a bit of power. The boost curves will help us explain that, but I, what I want you to pay attention to is the relationship between boost pressure and back pressure, and there are reasons why these things are interrelated, and uh, there's uh, something else at play here, and we'll talk about it in just a second. So this is these are our boost pressure and back pressure curves with the three-inch exhaust. So this is our six-liter with a single turbo, has an air-to-water intercooler, and these are the curves of our boost pressure and back pressure. So at 11.7 uh, pounds of boost pressure, we had 19.4, a peak of 19.4 pounds of back pressure. You can see that below 4,000 RPM or so, it was actually making less back pressure than boost pressure, and then they crossed over, and then we have a steady climb going up toward 20 pounds um, of back pressure with only around 11, less than 12 pounds of boost pressure. This is with the three inch exhaust. So here's an interesting thing. Here's an interesting comparison. This is what happened with our four inch exhaust. So two things to look at here. One is that it's making more boost pressure. So all we did was change the exhaust. We did not change the, there was no electronic boost controller on this, which I should have run in a direct back to back, back, back comparing the exhaust. Really more what the test, what the exhaust test showed was 
what happens when you just upgrade the exhaust because it also changes the boost. It did that for a couple of reasons. One, so the boost went up to on the four inch exhaust went up to 13 point a peak of 13.1 pounds. Back pressure, although peak back pressure dropped down to uh, 18.6. So the boost pressure, the nice thing is in this combination with the bigger exhaust, the boost pressure went up and it made more power, but the back pressure also went down. So that's a really good combination. And the reason that this happened is because of the, the back pressure, uh, it, it had lower back pressure because it had more exhaust flow. So the more that you restrict the turbo after the turbo, the more of an effect it can have on back pressure. So the restriction in the turbo was actually causing back pressure. The other thing that happened here is because we were not running an electronic controller, what happens is the back pressure affects the opening of the wastegate. So the greater the back pressure, the sooner that the wastegate is actually going to open. So that's a big consideration. As I said, all of this stuff is interrelated. So that's the great thing about having all this data is we can go back and look at this and look at this test and then also compare it to other things which we're going to do. So the, the, the wastegate opening earlier because of the higher back pressure on the smaller exhaust system caused this setup to have less boost with the smaller exhaust. So when we freed that up, we also added boost pressure. Um, and what would happen is if we were to, for instance, rerun this test with the smaller exhaust and I was to increase the boost pressure um, on the smaller exhaust so that it was exactly the same as the bigger exhaust, obviously the difference in power between the two would be less. There would still be some. I mean, the exhaust itself is going to be restrictive. What would also happen is if we raise the boost on the smaller exhaust setup, we would also go up quite a bit at almost a two to one rate in back pressure because the smaller exhaust has more back pressure. But if we had total control over the boost, the difference between the two exhaust systems wouldn't be as dramatic. They wouldn't be the 50 plus horsepower that we're seeing here, but they still would be some. And turbo setups, like big exhaust. Make the exhaust as big as you can, as big as you can possibly fit. But know that if you put a restrictive exhaust in it, it's also going to affect um, how much boost it has, how much back pressure it has, and how much power you make. Let's get to our next one. In our next example, we increase pa the power output of a turbocharged LS3, but by doing exactly the opposite. And by that, I mean previously our on our exhaust test, we had higher boost and lower back pressure but on this, and to make more power. But on this example, we actually have less boost and higher back pressure and more power. So let's check out why. Here is our test. This was run on an LS3. It was a crate motor. It had a Comp 469 camshaft in it and valve springs. We had different push rods. It had a, uh, we and we ran this with 317 heads and a fast LSXRT intake manifold. And then we also ran it with the LS3 heads and we ran it with the same turbo and it was a single turbo setup, just like we had run before on the six liter. Um, the only difference is this did not have uh, an S480 turbo. It had our pre precision 7675 CEA billet wheel wazoo thing, same procharger intercooler. And we had our, our turbo smart waste gates were still in place and they were run just on the springs with again, with no control. So here's what happened when we ran this thing. And this was a, this is, uh, I, I think it's seven or eight pounds or something. We'll take a look at the boost curve here. But run with the 317 heads, this thing made 807 horsepower and 747 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we did our head swap. Now we also compared this, and this video is up. You can take a look at the full video on the 317 versus the LS3 heads. The LS3 heads made a lot more power NA, and they also made more power under, under boost, but we're gonna look specifically at what happened with the boost curve and the back pressure curve. So here's what happened when we did our LS3 head swap. It picked up power as we would expect. Um, peak power was up to 826 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 771 foot pounds of torque. So not surprising for a six liter or a 6.2 liter, the factory LS3 heads are the most powerful head that you can put, most powerful factory head that you can put on that combination. But now let's take a look at the 
boost pressure and back pressure curves associated with this test. Okay, we know that adding the rec port heads, replacing 317 heads, and also if you replace a set of 799, 243, 241, 706, any cathedral port head, if you replace them on a 6 liter or a 6.2 liter with the factory rec port heads, you're going to pick up a lot of power. On the other heads, the 317 head has basically the same static compression as a rec port head does, so you're not going to pick up really any low speed power with the 317 heads on an NA application. On the other ones where you pick up compression, a lot of times the cathedral port heads will pick up power up to 4,000 or 4,500, but from there on up, the factory LS3 head or the LS3 style rec port head is going to make a lot more power than any of the other factory heads, and this is the case obviously under boost as well. But let's take a look at our boost pressure and back pressure curves, and this is with the 317 heads run on our single turbo 6.2 liter. As you can see, we had a peak of 7.6 pounds and it kind of tapered off to down near 7 and we had a peak back pressure reading of 13.8 so getting near the 2 to 1 ratio but here's what happened when we installed when we replaced the 317 heads and obviously cathedral port intake with the LS3 stuff we dropped boost so unlike the changing the exhaust on the other application where we picked up boost this actually lowered the boost to uh, a peak of, and not by a lot, to a peak of 7.4 pounds, and you can see all the way out it's a little bit lower than it was with the 317 heads. But the interesting thing is, even though the boost pressure was lower, the back pressure was actually slightly higher with the bigger head. So the peak back pressure was up to 14.2. So we had a little bit more than two to one with the rec port heads. And I know a lot of people are going to be thinking, oh, okay, well, that shows that the rec port heads aren't as good. Actually, it shows exactly the opposite. Because when you stop and think about it, the reason that the boost pressure came down is because the motor was now more efficient with those heads. It made more NA power. And that's exactly why the back pressure went up. So when you think about it, if we made more power, and even with slightly less boost, we have more exhaust flow. When you have more exhaust flow trying to flow through the same opening, which is the hot side of the turbo, what happens is with more exhaust flow in that system, the back pressure is going to be higher. So because we made more power, even though the boost was slightly lower, we made more power with the better cylinder heads. We had more exhaust flow. The more exhaust flow equated to a slightly higher back pressure. So it's possible to make more power with less boost and higher back pressure. It's also possible to make more power with more boost and a lower back pressure. So it works every way. And this is the great thing about having all this data is we get to go back and look at it. And this is why it's very important when you're doing dyno testing on your own, whether you're doing tuning on a chassis dyno or an engine dyno, you need to look at everything. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from all this turbo testing on our two different combinations and our two different tests? First of all, looking at our first test where we changed the exhaust size, we went from a 3-inch to a 4-inch exhaust. And by doing that, we did some great things. First of all, we increased the boost pressure, we lowered the back pressure and improved the flow, and most importantly, improved the power output. All of those things are good. But if we take a look at the flip side of that, because that was all concentrated on the exhaust side, if we look at the inlet side on the other test where we replaced the cylinder head and improved the cylinder head flow, the exact opposite thing, although we still improved the power, we reduced the boost, we raised the back pressure, both things we don't normally associate with increasing power, but we also increased the power output. That's why boost is so awesome and every motor needs to have more boost. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep